What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I wanted to show you, I want to load up my WiseCam app here, and I want to talk to you about the functionality of the WiseCam a little bit. Now, there were some comments in my WiseCam camera reviews that complained that I didn't really go into detail about the functionality. And so I want to explore the app a little bit more in detail here, or a lot of detail. Sorry for the excruciating detail on it. But first, here is the app. As you may or may not know, I have three Wise cameras, uh, two of the standard ones and one of the pan and tilt cameras. And what you do is when you add them to your app, they all show up as soon as you open it and you get a little thumbnail and each of them are labeled, in my case, garage, inside, and basement. Now, the thumbnail is always the last frame of the image that it saw. And so basically, I've always checked these in the middle of the night and they've always been in night vision mode, which is why they look like that, but they're not gonna always look like that because we're gonna go through them and try them again. A couple things I wanna show you and tell you is that um, setting up the wise cameras are super easy and now, it's kind of my understanding that the hardware is purchased from uh, a Chinese manufacturing company, and then they built their software to be really seamless, and it is. Man, I have tried cameras that are much more expensive, and the software is not nearly as good as this, and in some cases, the software doesn't work, or some, and sometimes the software is just a generic app, and sometimes it doesn't work at all, and so the Wise camera is just a nice package and functionality all the way through. I'll talk about the value proposition at the end, but first of all, when you open up the app, you see all your cameras here. At the top right, uh, you have an up and down arrow, and if I pick the tap that, what ends up happening is I get all my cameras and I can reorder these in any order I want. You just uh, click on the side here and then I can reorder them. And so I can have them in, you know, um, order that I really need to see them. And now the other thing about this uh, view right here is that the thumbnail is of the type of camera that it is. So you can see that I have a standard camera in the garage and in the basement, and then that pan tilt camera is uh, in the inside. And then when I reorder it and I like it, I just can hit save and you will see all the cameras in that order. The other thing of that plus sign at the top right is how you add a new camera. So if you buy another one, you can just add it. It is super simple. You can check out my um, actual video review of that to see how that is done. Now, I want to show you here, I want to tap on the, the garage thumbnail here, and that's going to open up the garage camera, and it should connect here uh, to the garage camera, and as you can see, it's actually in night vision mode right now. And so what that means is that it's putting on a little bit of infrared illumination, and what you can see is the door frame there, the closed shelf, but you can't really see the whole room because it's all dark and the garage is pretty big, and the illuminator just isn't big enough to light up everything, right? But you can see some, kind of the outline of my car there. Now, it is streaming, and it show you the streaming. Um, it, I can also pinch and zoom on any of these images. They are HD. And uh, when it's in night vision, everything is gonna look black and white or kind of grayscale. Now I'm gonna flip on the garage lights here. And as you can see, it detects a light and then automatically switches night vision off because I have it in auto setting. And now I can see everything. And really, that is really a nice picture. You know, I can kind of look around. There's no pan, tilt, or zoom on this technically. You know, I'm just doing this by finger here. And if I tap in the right uh, top corner of the the image here, those little, that little square, it'll go full screen. And now I can actually do some other things. I can interface, I can record this video, speak through the microphone or take a snapshot. I'm just gonna go back here because I can do all of those things as well right here um, with the, the smaller image. I can hit the sound button and uh, um, that means I can hear anything that's happening in the garage. So if people are in there or talking or there's a car coming or something like that or something falls, I can listen to it. It's, it's streaming that audio out. I can hit that record button and record what I'm seeing here. It's gonna save it to my camera roll. I can hit the speak button, kind of like a walkie talkie button. I hold it down and speak and then it projects that audio through the garage. Now my, my issue with that, and I will tell you that the, probably the drawback of that is because it's on a little bit of a lag. Sometimes people are walking through the garage and I've said something and they're out of the garage by the time it actually broadcasts that. So just a little bit of lag there and I can also hit that take photo button and it will take a photo and save it to my album. There's also a little bit of a more button here so I can do time lapse or turn the camera off completely, but uh, usually you won't have to do that. Now, what I want to show you here is I'm going to turn off the garage lights again and it's going to switch back to night vision. Um, I also thought about getting like an ultra or an infrared light bulb or something like that so I could see the whole um, garage at night, but it's not really a big deal and you could certainly do that if you wanted to. But I'm going to hit the, the back button here um, and just show you that it, it saved that well that wasn't a really good example let me just turn on the light here and uh, we've got a color image and now i'm going to back out of this and go back to the main screen here 
And what you should see now is that the thumbnail has changed to the last image that it showed. So pretty cool. Now I'm going to go back to the camera feed here because I want to go up to the very top right and look at that little gear icon. I'm going to tap that. And what we have here are a ton of different settings and I use these settings. So I'm going to hit the alert settings there first. And what you can see is we have motion detection. You can change the sensitivity of it, slide that slider around. Uh, even on one, it's not a problem. It still picks up bugs. It still picks up garage door opening, people walking through, light changes, all of that. Um, in fact, there's my alert that it sensed motion in the garage, probably a bug flying in front of it. I'll show you a little bit about what it records when it gets that alert in a moment here. Um, full screen sound detection. I also have that set to low sensitivity, but sometimes, you know, particularly at night when it can't see and you notice when it's all black like that at night, you know, someone were to smash a window or something like that, make a loud ruckus or something were to fall and hit the ground, the sound detection alert would go off. So at least if I can't see it, I know something else is going on. They also have the smoke alarm sound detection and the carbon monoxide alarm sound detection. I turn those on even though I don't have a smoke detector or carbon monoxide detector in the garage. But what I do like about those is that they're kind of tuned into those particular sounds. So they should give you an alert if, it, if it's detecting that, especially if you're using this as a baby camera or something like that, or in a room or inside your house. It's just a little bit of extra kind of protection, a little bit of more redundancy. Um, again, it doesn't have a smoke detector and it doesn't have a carbon monoxide detector in it. It's just listening for the sounds of those alarms. And then you can set your alert schedule. I have it set to all day, but you can to set your alert schedule for just when you're at work maybe you're at home or maybe you just want it at night when you are home and you want those alerts so you can do all of that now um we can go here to the advanced settings as well. You can absolutely put an SD card in there, a micro SD card and have local storage on it. I don't ever do that with any of these. I just use the cloud storage and I'm gonna show you how nice that is. The night vision mode is auto. Camera status light is a little red LED on it. I have that turned off, especially if you're using it as a security camera, you probably don't want a little light showing that it's on, but maybe you do. Maybe it's a workshop or a, a property or something like that and you want people to know they're being recorded, you could certainly turn that on. Rotate image 180 degrees is pretty clever and that allows you to use software to flip the image um, to rotate it and that's because sometimes you're setting up the camera say on a shelf just normally like you would expect it to but sometimes you're mounting it to a ceiling or underneath the shelf and so the camera is upside down so to see that image right side up you can just toggle that on or off timestamp watermark as you were able to see i have the date and time always visible in the image so that's kind of nice and then recording sound absolutely i do that as well so that i can see that and then what you can do is you can always change your device info you can change the garage you know in my case the name here which is garage by just tapping on that edit icon uh, and it'll show you all of your um, information now i've also noticed that every now and then it does check for firmware updates and if it detects it it says hey do you want to update the firmware and it does that you know it usually takes about 60 seconds or 100 seconds or so to do that but they they are definitely pushing out firmware updates to do that now i want to go back here to the main screen and uh, show you the the second one the inside camera and again the light is on in that room now, so the image will look different than when the, it grabbed the last image and it was off. And again, I, another 1080p high definition image here and all the same features like pinch to zoom. Um, but what we also have here is this little trackpad or the little circle at the bottom where I can um, pan left and right and I can tilt up and down so that's pretty cool the the great thing about this camera is that it's the perfect home monitoring camera whether it is a kid's playroom and you want to look around or a dog in your house and you want to see if he's on the couch or down by the front door or something like that i even thought about putting these in a window like on a second story so that i could look at different parts of the yard you know the 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 ability to kind of zoom around as opposed to just having a big fisheye lens uh, means that you can have all that resolution focused in on one area all the same things here we get all the same settings sound uh, noise um, night vision uh, you know all the same alerts but you just get it in a pan and zoom or a pan and tilt uh, uh, camera as opposed to just the static camera so really really awesome and this camera is only marginally more expensive than the others so I think really really fantastic now I told you I was going to talk to you about what it records and you can see the thumbnail there went back to the last image that it was on uh, now I want to show you what it records here so I'm going to go to notifications you look at down at the bottom it says devices notifications and my account I'm going to tap on the notifications tab here and what you can see at the top here we have kind of a running calendar right so it's Sunday the 9th and I'm gonna go back in time and look at 
all of the motion and sound alerts and what it recorded during that period of time. Now it only records, I think 10 or 15 seconds and it's all doing it on the Wise Cam Cloud. I don't have any local storage set up on this. And so it's really nice because I've never paid for anything in the subscription. I don't know whether they purge it based on time or storage on their cloud storage um, account, but for me, I've never had an issue with it. And especially if you're coming home regularly and maybe you see a window broken or a package was stolen or something like that, uh, usually you're gonna notice that in the next last day or two. And if I go back to some of these days, I still have all the notification recordings for all those days. But let me just go to today, Sunday the 9th. Now, it's recorded a lot of stuff, but some of these were just gonna be going in and out. Some of these might have been a bug flying in front of the camera. So what I wanna do is I just wanna scroll down here to uh, something that I think is is actual motion. So this uh, motion alert at 5.14 p.m., this one right here, I'm just gonna tap on that. And what it will do is it'll start immediately playing the video from the cloud, uh, what it recorded at that time. So here we have uh, me in the garage, the car backing out of the garage, and you know, it's, in beautiful color it's recording the audio with it and you know it's just a great way to kind of take a quick peek and see you know if this is something that is just part of the mundane every day or if it's an issue that you need to review or save and if it is is something that you need to save right you can absolutely do that so you can uh, go down here to the bottom either you have some icons across there if I hit on share what I can do is actually send this to uh, various people, right? I could message it out, iMessage or text message it out, email it. Um, I could save it to Dropbox. I could save it to my camera roll right there. So you can save this, especially for law enforcement reasons, or maybe it's just something that you don't want to have up in the cloud anymore because you don't want it to get deleted. You can absolutely do that. And look at all the ones that are recorded. Some of these are on motion. Others are in sound, as you can see. So sometimes it doesn't detect anything, you know, especially because if the garage is dark, how hard it is to see anything but it will pick up and record any sound issues so pretty awesome now if i go back here to uh the devices um you know i can go back here to the basement and that the light is on in the basement at the moment too so it's connecting there and now it's going to give me kind of a live but it's going to be in color because that is the night vision version oh maybe it's not that is actually the night vision version so you can see how gray it is there and because things are close here the illuminator on the camera works very well right it's just the garage when you've got 30 40 feet of space that you need to illuminate a wide open space because this camera is set up right at my sump pump which is only four or five feet away you know i think the night vision on this is is really quite good and uh, especially if you have a kid or a baby um, you know it's going to not interfere with them now at the top left there you can see it says SD what I actually didn't realize is I didn't have this on HD so I'm gonna hit that and toggle it to HD and it's going to have to uh, switch over because that's more data to stream um, you probably won't be able to tell a big difference here because of kind of the the static nature of <laughs> what's going on in that room but I do like the fact that you can toggle it back down you know especially if you have a slow internet connection and actually want to uh, stream something so pretty awesome i love the wise cam devices here um last thing i want to say is uh, on each of these titles like garage inside you can see on the right side of it we have a little green share link and the reason you have that is if someone else wants to set up a wise camera account you can share any camera you want to that account so you don't need to set up one account for your whole household one login and password right if you want to share with your spouse um, one camera or your kids one or two cameras or something like that or a friend you know camera uh, maybe you have a rental property that you are a property manager of and uh, you know with friends you can all share the one feed together you don't need to have the same account and so that is a really great feature of it as well so um, as you can see the wise camera app is very robust it's simple but you can do a lot with it it and it has worked out just phenomenally for me ever since I discovered the wise cam so I really love not only the hardware but it's really the software that makes the wise camera so valuable and on top of that as I said when the wise camera itself the base wise camera is only about $20 or so and then the pan and tilt camera is only about 30 plus dollars it is just an unbelievable value I mean at any price point I would put these up against the nest cameras or the uh, blink cameras from Amazon, which I have and I really like too, you know. But those are those the camera units themselves start at like hundred and twenty dollars or more on those. This is just as good, and in many ways, I think it's easier to set up. And I like the functionality, and I like the alerts, and I love the cloud storage. And um, so, just just on merits alone, on the software and the hardware, I'd probably pick the Wise Camera. But 
the fact that it is a third or a quarter or a fifth of the price of those other cameras is um, just remarkable and it means that they are the hands down favorite uh, home security camera for me. So I really, really like these. So whether you want to just add a camera so that you can see if packages were delivered at your front door or watch the front of your house or watch your pet or your um, nursery or your home when you're on vacation. I mean, these can serve all sorts of different purposes. So I will put links to them in the description if you want to pick them up. But I think you can buy these without any reservations because they are just a phenomenal, phenomenal deal. So hopefully you enjoyed this detailed look at the software here um, and pair that with my review of the hardware but uh, purchase without reservation peter von panda out <laughs>